plays games with Steve and Angel. We're all full of pizza. Mm. Steve, for some reason, decided we should do the last one a whole hour, and I, I was saw, starving. I thought it was. I, I was I, starving, I, but now I'm full of pizza. I just wanted to end on a satisfactory note. Well, the satisfactory note was pizza. Yes. All right. That's true. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I ate all the pizza. Well, well, you know, if Emma didn't show up in court, then we would have been eating pizza sooner. So mm. oh, I'm so sorry. It's but, all my fault. <laughs> So sorry. You're sorry. right, Emma. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Jurassic crimes require Jurassic murders. <laughs> That's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. It's just, just the, the way it is. It's the same. <laughs> dulin, dulin, dulin. <laughs> we did what we had to. Dulin, dulin, dulin. In order for him to get the verdict he deserved. <laughs> See them changes. Lots of changes. Too many changes. Hold off the changes. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know what song you were referencing. Neither uh, did I, <laughs> but I'm not asking. <laughs> I never knew that the SLN is the SLN. The Saturday Night Live incident. <laughs> Saturday, is, night, Saturday <laughs> Night Live! No, Saturday Night Live! <laughs> Starring <laughs> Damon Gant, oh, what a scar! Officer Meekins, <laughs> Jake Marshall, musical guests, Joe Dark Killings, <laughs> and now here's your host, the Blue Badger. <laughs> Oh god. This is not the first time we've done an SNL rundown. Really? Uh, <laughs> I I can't recall the other one. Fans maybe could remember, but yeah, yeah the hard rest. Fans. It was, was just another We're before. never gonna finish this game. <laughs> the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Everybody's heard about these killings but me! <laughs> Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Sorry, I, I, I raised my voice there. Was, uh, calm down. What do you mean? What do you uh, mean? Don't yell at me. <laughs> what do you mean what happened to you? <laughs> what do you mean what happened to you? Joe Dark's last victim was pr Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Were you about to say Professor Emma? <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, you can definitely feel. You can definitely Howdy. tell we're full of energy. Because <laughs> <laughs> Emma Sky is pouring her her dear little heart out here. We're just like, like oh, <laughs> what are these? <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, when he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. Who's hotter, Jake or uh, Neil Marshall Angel? I mean. I think Jake just has so much more to go by. I mean, he has like the mm. whole sprite where he's like. You know, shaving his here's beard. one. Here's one thing I wanted to bring up, but didn't want to like interrupt during like the story moment. But uh -huh. when I first played this game, I didn't realize that was Jake Marshall's hair until he took his hat off. Mm. For some reason, I thought he just had like like a like cloth underneath his hat. It's like, ooh, it's it's, it's hot. And oh, oh, I see. Because there's no like shine on it, so it didn't quite look like hair to me. I can so, see that. Yeah. It's just completely matte. Yeah, we're um, never gonna finish this scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stop taking my pizza! Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what you ate! <laughs> but what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night, Professor <laughs> Prosecutor. God <laughs> damn! Um, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this episode's a bust! I'll tune in tomorrow! <laughs> wrong with us oh my god all right we're pizza loopy i guess uh, <laughs> this happened with mcdonald's breakfast too get to <laughs> we're food on, drunk uh, all right on the night prosecutor neil marshall was murdered joe dark tried to kill me what he tried to kill you oh god officer, officer marshall's brother neil was was only trying to save me so that means you... Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one... I didn't see that one coming. It's like, you crazy. never saw it come, man! Take that! Okay, so this is like a actual yeah. moment. It happened two years ago. 
It was right about this time of the year, too. It would have been really messed up if you just decided to leave Emma. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, this is boring. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> there was a terrible thunderstorm that day. Unusual for the season. What season is it right now? Uh, it's February. Well, oh, well, February. this was in yeah, February, yeah. but I forget when the murder actually took place. Yeah, yeah. So we said it's, she said it's like about the same time. So I mean, I don't know. There's oh a, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of showers. I don't know. I was alone in my sister's office. I'm just like judging her. Mm. Uh, we were planning to eat dinner together. <laughs> you scream, Objection! <laughs> or what season was it? Are you sure? Yeah. You know, we were planning to eat dinner together when she finished her work. Then suddenly. This terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. <laughs> <laughs> like a freak. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Professor Marshall, Marshall actually. Stop! <laughs> Prosecutor Marshall showed up. <laughs> Stop! Jake Marshall's oh. Jake Marshall. <laughs> Jake Marshall's brother. Brother. Jake Marshall's brother. <laughs> Professor Neil Marshall. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then. What happened? I'll never forget it. Lightning struck, and the lights went out. And suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window. Lighting up, uh, lighting up the office for an instant. <clears throat> Got pizza phlegm. What I saw then bur uh, burned a permanent picture in my mind. I, I can still see it now. Permanent picture? That's relevant. What did you see in the instant that crime occurred? Mm. Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When he came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. You've been through so much. I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that incident. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago. You must have been 14. That's understandable. I mean, I put a child on as a witness stand <laughs> Yeah. 14. Yeah, Cody Hackins, and he sucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies and find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana could never, uh, would never have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma tick. There's still something that bothers me about that crime. <clears throat> I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. When I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? Bogus. Totally bogus evidence. Give me a break. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> the prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. Couldn't have known he was given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean, the rumors about uh, the rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean, it's all my fault. I could have just testified properly. None of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She's being cold as she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. Something puzzling. They're almost so kind. 
That's not what I was thinking. But, but now she is mean and she is cold and unrefined. And she turns around. That's very rude. Anyway, <laughs> I think there's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? What is it? <laughs> What's that, Phoenix? Shh. I'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> You said you were in Lana's office at the time, right? At that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Professor. Shut <laughs> up! Shut up! <laughs> oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police apartment. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. Why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective's offices in the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Did that go through faster than the other ones? I have no yeah, idea. I have no idea. Like the speed is like, yeah, because look how slow that is. Yeah. It's like really inconsistent. Somet yeah, d definitely it paces it out sometimes differently. Interesting. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective? We better have another talk with her. I'm like starting to doubt myself and like, did I read that as professor or prosecutor? <laughs> you would have never told know. me. Uh, it's okay. I've said I, I've said Occam's laser on this show before, so. Occam's laser? Yeah. It's what like, is it actually? Occam's razor. Oh, that's right. For what? <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, Virtus us reward, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, people are like, ha! Um, Steve cried. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the detention center. Poor Steve. Poor Steven. Poor Steve. Saying wrong words. Oh, when we were here, we didn't get a chance to talk to the fucking... To him. Oh, oh no! It was probably the same thing! Sungwon, no. Sung we gotta go back. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's start over. Alright. Alright. Clap us in. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Lana. Mr. Wright. Seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details? Especially about that unusual change of jobs. I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. Bro, Mr. Wright's bro, rights. Bro. Okay, no. I almost thought, like, I was like envisioned her saying, it's like, but maybe innocent people might get locked up. And all oh, this guy says, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Right, the visitor's, the visitor's room. room. He seems frozen in place, cowering under this room's oppressive atmosphere. See, oh. I, I wanted to know what he would say about Meekins. This oh. guy wants to leave. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to leave so bad right now. What if he liked Meekins, though? Um, I don't know. You never know. <laughs> I uh, find him charming. <laughs> Sorry, that was too gumshoe there. <laughs> I find him charming. His voice is so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Today's trial. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today, not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. That's a long ass sentence. Mm. Evidence from that case was stolen. I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial. It really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is, 
At 5.15, there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Starr, said? About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with the knife? Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma, this doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. I've never seen her profile. Yeah, so. she's, oh, she's turned 45 degrees. <laughs> it's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing. <laughs> they still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant cracked together. Chief Gant? Then he was the vice head of criminal affairs. I still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports even be, uh, could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To get experience investigating crime scenes, so you could later use that experience in court. Gant's help in the SL9 case was critical in its resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Dark investigation. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the chief detective was no doubt Damon Gant? Yes. Detective Gant and I shared the same office and the same investigations, and we had a cool pose. They even had the same office, and they were roommates. <laughs> <laughs> we led a team of the best detectives on the force. Right there! <laughs> <laughs> Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall. Who we kicked Amy off, or he kept pointing at the map and saying that. <laughs> Not there, there. <laughs> Not there, there. <laughs> that's where that's where the closest Arby's is. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, he would no, 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 that's a saying. Like, that's like when I'd be like, where's the closest White Castle to us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right Damn. there. Right here. <laughs> An angel star who yes. kept talking on a... Thin mint. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung ho. Right there. <laughs> right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer because he showed up to the interview with a knife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. He has my knife. <laughs> we asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when the last murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. <laughs> now you tell us. I know. Also, um, when did Death Note come out? 2007, I want to say, or 2006? No, earlier than that. I would say... Four? <sighs> would it be about the same time that this came out? It would be really It would later. be later than this, I think. Oh, well, no, this case, I don't know. This, no, this case had already probably come out. Because I think Death Note started releasing in the States around 2005, 2006. Mm, okay. oh, it was definitely, yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, that's so much crazy different from 2007, like I said. Anyway. Yeah, I was just wondering because Dark Light. <laughs> but, I'd, Zero but I knew the answer. Wow, good for you. <laughs> well, oh, and next time when you ask a question, I'll just let the comments answer months from now. That's yeah. what I usually do. <laughs> yeah. I was curious. That, that lines up. It makes me curious. Detective Gant and Prosecutor Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. Investigation was in its final stages when Dark must have panicked. Waited until Gant and Marshall let their guards down, then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Detective Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run to the scene, Lana. It appears so. 
I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. Ooh, I laid it right on top of them. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim Emma, who had passed out. And the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall stuck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her after all her sister must have... I'll just wait. After all her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. W what are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dart. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Huh? Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The Chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the Chief's office, the site of the final SL9 murder. Hmm... Where is that? Um, would it be a criminal theories? Or is it at the other place? Try the other place. Okay. I assume I have to go... No! Dang it. <laughs> Actually, no, go back to... You can go the way you came. There's like, you know, there's different ways you can go about this. This one, right? Yeah. Sure. This one. This one, that one, mm. this one, that one. Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Okay, sera, sera. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? You know, I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? The name of my dick. Oh. Must be his pet cactus. Say, where are you heading? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But Mr. Marshall, why did he do it? Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall. Do you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm. Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with the broken tip? Well, that was Joe Dark's, all right. But, in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. <laughs> However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. 
I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he, your brother? He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. Oh my god. The highest honor? You don't mean... King of Prosecutors. Not that again. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Oh. Uh -huh. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Right there. Right there. Right. Miss Star was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean Damon Gant and Lana Sky. What? Chief Detective Damon Gant and his second to command Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah. Damon Gant, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Huh? Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There is one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Oh. Is that new? Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. He rode off into the sunset. No. It's like a moped. Though. Oh, I can't. Oh, yeah. I guess I don't have access to go. But he said the evidence room is closed, so you can't go in there. Well, what if I just want to hang out? In Too bad. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Fucking I... go somewhere else. No one's here today. Not even Miss Star. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went in down in the... Uh, like... Alright, let me do that again. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. We proved in court today that no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15 p.m. On the day of the crime. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. Instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Me and there, Lana. I have to find all the answers by tomorrow. Poor Lana. Poor Lana. Poor Lana. 
Mm. In there all alone. Do you think it'd be all right to see? If, I don't know. Miles has anything? No. No. Do whatever you want, Angel. Oh, okay. Okay, Marshall. I'm always with you, Angel. <laughs> I'll be right uh, here. Hey. Right here. <laughs> right, right here. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth isn't here. Maybe he's been questioned by an inquiry committee? He took a real beating in court today. Yeah, while admitting to falsifying, uh, falsifying evidence two years ago. I guess we'll just have to come back later. Boo, boo, boo. Bum bum bum, bum bum bum, bum bum bum, bum bum bum. Oh, that's useless. Bum 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 This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. It must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. But the chief prosecutor saying that what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media in tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. Oh, God. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have access. Uh, we'd like to have. Uh, we'd like to look around Chief Gant's office. Use your words, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> Just head across the hall to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. What the fuck. Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the chief's office. Well, wait, no. Uh, no, 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 but then you'll have to head there tomorrow. Ah. Uh, really? That far? Yeah, it's like a day's journey. It's gonna take a while. No. Oh, no. Oh. 